What's good, math family? In this review, we're going to look at common topics and problems you'll see on your midterm exam and how to properly solve them. In the first problem, they give us two scenarios and they want us to match the equation to it. And this could be easy if we understand the fixed fee of $25 and the fixed fee of 15. Our equation is going to take the format y is equal to mx plus b. And understand, math family, the $15 and the $25, that is going to be our B. This is what we pay before we even start driving the vehicle and paying the additional 10 or 20 cents per mile based on how far we go. So answer choice A, C, and D are incorrect because they do not have the correct Y-intercept. So our correct answer should be B. Because we know for company A, we have to pay $25 as an initial fee, then the 10 cents per mile that we drive. And the same thing for company B, $15 is the initial charge plus the 20 cents per mile based on the amount of miles we drive. So they give us a arithmetic sequence and they want us to come up with the equation that represents it. So we're talking about the equation A sub N is equal to the d times n minus 1 plus a sub 1. That's the arithmetic sequence formula. And we know the common difference in this problem is 4, and we know the first term in the sequence is 2. So once we fill this in, this is what the equation should look like in the first step. Then we simplify. So we're going to have a sub n is equal to 4n minus 4 plus 2. So now once we simplify this, the equation that we're going to use is 4n minus 2. So if we wanted to find the third term in the sequence, we would substitute and simplify. So we know the third term in the sequence will be 4 times 3, right, minus 2. When we simplify this now, we're going to have 12 minus 2. And we just double check this sequence and we determined the third term in the sequence would be 10, which it is. So we know the equation 4n minus 2 is the correct one to represent the sequence. They give us a trinomial and they tell us that this trinomial represents the area of a square. And if we remember the area of a square, we know that we could find it by length times width. Or we could just take one of the sides and square it. Basically, we have to know that the sides have the same length. So when I factor this, we should know that this is probably a perfect square trinomial since both the sides have the same measure. And when I factor this, this is going to turn into g plus 4 times g plus 4. When we multiply, that'll give us that 16 at the end. And when we add 4g plus 4g, that will give us that 8g in the middle. So just make sure you understand that concept and that they are going to have the same side length. So in the following problem, they want us to match the equation to the graph. And for us to properly do that, we have to identify all the zeros. So the first zero is x is equal to negative 2. When I work backwards, to get x is equal to negative 2, that means the factor had to be x plus 2 is equal to 0. So this is the first factor, x plus 2. The second factor, for x to be equal to positive 1, it had to be x minus 1 as the factor. And once we set it equal to 0, this is how we get x is equal to 1. So that's my second factor. Then the third factor, same thing x is equal to positive 3, so I know to get that 0, the factor had to be x minus 3 is equal to 0. So now that we understand that, once we simplify and factor equations 1, 2, and 3, these are the three factors we're looking for. So when I simplify equation number 1, this is what we should have. We have x plus 2 times x minus 6 times x plus 2. 
when we look at this, we know this is incorrect because we don't have x minus 3 as a 0 or x minus 1. So equation 1 is, is incorrect. When we go over to equation number 2, right, we have x minus 3. That's the first factor. We know that's correct. And then x squared plus x minus 2. When we simplify that, we are going to get x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now, when we look at these three factors compared to what's highlighted, we notice that we have all, all three of them are the same. So let's just highlight this one because this is a correct answer. Now we're going to check equation number three. So when we go and do an equation number three now, we had the first factor, x minus one. And then once we factor x squared minus 5x minus 6, this is what we're going to get as a um, answer. We're going to get x minus 6 times x plus 1. That's going to give us the negative 6 when we multiply, negative 5 when we add. And when we look at these answer choices, this is also incorrect because we do not have the same zeros. So the correct answer would be answer choice 2 only because this is the only equation where we would get the same three zeros. So they give us a word problem and they want us to basically interpret what the function represents. So they give us the function f of t is equal to 100 plus 25t. We know that t represents the money in hand as account after a certain amount of monthly deposits. So typically in this type of problem or this context, we should know that the 100 represents $100, right? This is probably just an initial fee to open the account. And then we know that the 25, right? That should normally just represent the dollar, the dollar amount that we deposit each month. So each month we're going to deposit $25. So when we go through our answer choices, and the first one says with each monthly deposit, the amount in Hannah's bank account increases by $25. This is correct. Every month she's going to put in $25. So let's just, let's bubble this in. B, before Hannah made any monthly deposits, the amount in her bank account was $25. No, if we substitute zero in for T, we would have F of zero is equal to 100 plus zero. So that's incorrect. When we go to C, after one monthly deposit, the amount in Hannah's bank account was 25. No, 25 times one gives us 25. When we add that to 100, she had a balance of $125. And in answer choice D, Hannah made a total of 25 monthly deposits. It never told us how many deposits she made. It just says that she adds $25 per month in her account. So just be mindful with these type of questions and understand what they are asking and what the equation represents. So they tell us that line T has a slope of negative one over three and passes through the point nine, 10. And their action is which equation defines line T? Well, for one, if line T is negative, that means answer choice A and B are going to be incorrect, right? It probably should have a negative slope. So to solve this, we're going to do substitution and we're using that point slope formula. So when we look at the point here, we have y minus y1, which is 10, is equal to our slope, negative 1 over 3, times x minus x1. We know x1 is 9. So when we simplify, we have y minus 10 is equal to negative 1 over 3x. And when we multiply negative 1, 3 times 9, that's just 9 over 3, which is going to give us a positive 3. 
Now we simplify by adding 10 on both sides and we're gonna get y is equal to negative one over three x plus 13. So the equation that would represent this scenario would be d, y is equal to negative x over three plus 13. So the x is to simplify this expression with exponents and the first thing we need to do is take care of that power to a power. So we multiply exponents. So x to the third changes to x to the 12th and y to the fifth changes to y to the 20th. Now the second expression, Yes, we have negative exponents, but I would not take the reciprocal yet. What we can do is let's multiply our exponents to get x to the negative 6, y to the negative 4. Now that we've done that, we could add our exponents. And if we have any negative exponents left, then we could use our negative exponent rule. So x to the 12th plus x to the negative 6 is gonna give me x to the positive six, and y to the positive 20 plus y to the negative four is gonna give me y to the 16. So when we look at our answer choices, this answer choice is going to be C. So they ask us for the y value for the solution of the systems of equations. And for us to solve this very quickly, the best way to do this is let's just make one of our y's negative. So I'm gonna make this second equation negative, meaning I'm gonna multiply each term by negative one. So first equation stays the same. Second equation becomes positive two x minus y is equal to positive 12. That is gone. We're left with five x is equal to 15. So now I know that my x is equal to three. Now that we know that, we could plug it back into equation one, right? Three times x, three times three, plus y is equal to three. So we have nine plus y is equal to three. When I get y by itself, by subtracting nine, I know y is going to be equal to negative six. So the correct answer should be A. So the axis for the vertex of the parabola, and there's two ways that we could do this. So the first one is we could do the opposite of B over 2A. So B right now is six. So I know we have the opposite of six all over two times A, A is one. So we get negative three. So this is the x coordinate for the vertex. So we could eliminate d, a, and that is it. So we plug this back in, negative three squared plus six times negative three plus seven. So what we're gonna get is nine minus 18 plus seven. So we have negative nine, plus seven, we get negative two. So we know the vertex is gonna occur at negative three, negative two. So the answer choice should be B. Now, another way that we could do this same problem is we could complete the square. So let's erase real quick. So if we completed the square, we would have moved seven over to the other side. So it would have x squared plus six x is equal to negative seven. All we did was subtract seven. We do half of six and square it, so that's three squared is nine. Add it on both sides. When I break this trinomial down, it's gonna turn into x plus three squared, and this is equal to positive two. Now, when I subtract this two and bring it on the other side, I would have y is equal to x plus three, squared minus two, and I know that negative three, negative two would represent my vertex. So two ways to do this, we could use the opposite of b over two a, or we could complete the square to figure out the vertex. So they give us an equation and they want us to rearrange it and solve for c. So the equation will say c is equal to. First thing we wanna do is get what's in parentheses by itself so we could split it. 
So we're going to divide by n. That's the first step. So we have 19 minus c is equal to p divided by n. Now at this step, I could drop these two parentheses. And now what we're going to do is subtract 19 from both sides. So we have negative c is equal to p over n minus 19. Now the issue here is that when the variable is stand, stands alone by itself, it cannot be negative. So if we divide c by negative 1, this becomes positive. p divided by n becomes negative and 19 becomes positive. So when we look at our answer choice, we know that A does not follow this format, B does not follow this format, C is partially correct because 19 is positive, but P over N, it should not be positive. So we should know that the correct answer is D. All they did was write 19 first and then subtract the P divided by 9. These two are the same exact expressions, just written different. So we're dealing with radicals and exponents, and they want us to figure out what is the equivalent expression. And for us to do that, we need to understand that that I just highlighted. When we rewrite this as rational exponents, we would have x to the 4 over 5th power. So if we look at this x that was pulled from under the radical, for us to pull it from under the radical, that means it had to be an x to the 5 over 5 power. So now once I rewrite it like this and both of our expressions have the same base, we could add, the, add our exponents. So we get x to the 9 over 5th power, which would be c. If you think about it like this, let's say we had... We have the fifth root of x to the ninth. So when we look at it like this, we could take out these five x's. This will be that x to the 5 over 5 power, which is this x to the first power. Then what's left over would be the fifth root of x to the fourth power, which is the same expression. And this is why it's important to understand inverse operation with radicals and exponents. So in this last problem, really hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, family. If you have, smash the like button for us. Really helps us to get this video out to more students in need. So they ask us, what is the equation of the graph? And I need you guys to understand that we should already eliminate answer choice B and answer choice D because these are positive slopes and this line that we're looking at is a negative slope. Now, next thing we're going to look at is the fact that the y-intercept is negative 8. So we can't do anything with it. But what we can do is pick points on our graph and determine what is the rise over run. And when we look at the rise over run, it's going to be one over one. With each point, we go down one over one. So the correct answer would be C. The equation for this graph is Y is equal to negative X minus eight. Really hope that this midterm review was helpful, family. Hope that all these tips and tricks were helpful and that it'll help you improve your math score. If you find it helpful, smash the like button for us. Subscribe to the channel and leave comments down below for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. Or if you had questions on today's video, thank you guys so much for joining Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.